Hey everybody, Gina Mizell here alongside Danny Moran. We are inside Oregon State's indoor center because it's pouring rain outside uh, Oregon State practice today, of course, in preparation for their trip to Utah on Saturday, and it was an offensive availability day. We'll talk quarterbacks and stuff in a second, but the offensive line is obviously a huge position group with Sean Harlow's injury. You got to talk to TJ Woods, and so just kind of what's the update there as far as what they plan to do to make up for his loss? Uh, the plan now is to start Will Hopkins, who mm -hmm. came in in place of Harlow uh, during the Colorado game. He has been out uh, before that game with Mono and just had not even been traveling with the team. Uh, so that's kind of the plan now. If you watch practice, it may not be apparent, because they're moving guys around. We saw, like yesterday and today, Isaac Sayamalu uh, move from right guard over to le left tackle position, but Wood said that, you know, that's kind of similar to what they do all year as far as rotating guys and making sure that people are prepared in instances like this. Because um, obviously, if, you know, the work should happen and more guys go down, uh, they're going to need to do some even more shifting, too. Uh, Fred Lowino was not had a red non-contact jersey mm -hmm. today. Um, he's questionable, so he may go and give that line a little depth, but uh, it's it's tough right now. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, Oregon State's offense has struggled throughout a lot of Pac-12 play, only put 13 points on the board against Colorado, but Dave Baldwin was pretty upbeat today, and he actually said that this was the best practice that the offense has had, he said, since they've been here. So that's that's quite a big statement, a lot of praise. And, and so it just maybe it seems like with this Using two quarterbacks, uh, Ryan Nall has emerged. Maybe things are finally starting to click for this group. We thought this was perhaps the case a few weeks ago, but maybe they finally started to figure some things out. Yeah, it's really hard to tell, you know, <laughs> kind of from the limited uh, amount we're able to watch. But I think, yeah, at this point, you want to stress the positives. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're coming off a game where it was maybe your most winnable game of the year and you don't win it, why then get, you know, super negative with it? I, I think maybe that's a little bit of what Dave Baldwin was trying to do. But like you said, with Nall, and there being a couple positives and maybe getting a little bit more of a passing game if the receivers are, uh, you know, doing a better job catching the ball, right. uh, you know, the offense will be moving and, and, and seeing that same sort of positive progression we really saw up until uh, the Stanford game. Yeah, Dave Baldwin re-emphasized again that Seth Collins is the starter, but they're, they're, you know, the plan is, of course, to play both guys, both Collins and, and Mitchell, and uh, he said he kind of liked the adversity that Seth Collins has now had to face. He obviously won the starting job with flying colors with his performance against Weber State, then struggled, and now he's kind of getting a little extra extra push heading into the, the second half of the season. Yeah, yeah, and maybe that's what the coaching staff was hoping for. I mean, <laughs> given that it, he made a little bit of a regression, we saw the, the two weeks against Arizona and Washington State, uh, and obviously with, with them able to run the ball without relying so much on Seth Collins last week, that's better for his body and better for the offense overall when you can give the defense multiple looks at things you can do. Yeah, and the, the goal of course is to be creative and I think that's going to be needed against a Utah yeah. defense. He kind of shook his head and said, oh, when, when thinking about or talking about uh, the, the Utes and what they can bring up front, what they can bring, yeah, linebacker and of course in the secondary as well. It's going to be a tough challenge for Oregon yeah, State. Yeah, and they specialize in creating turnovers. I mean, mm -hmm. the USC game was a, a rare instance. They believe the only game this year where they didn't have a turnover that the defense created. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's something that uh, Oregon State's going to have to look out for, particularly, you know, in the downfield passing game. Absolutely. Well, of course, Oregon State travels to Salt Lake City on Saturday, but until then, we will have all of your coverage on OregonLive.com and in the Oregonian every single day after Thursday's practice, of course. Gary Anderson will speak to reporters, and then that will be it for the week. So for Danny Moran, I am Gina Mizell. We will catch you next time from Corvallis.